All right, thanks for coming, everybody. This is Streaming 101, uh, an introduction to on-demand entertainment. Uh, a lot of you here probably already do stream, even if you don't know it. Um, <laughs> we're just going to go over the different types of streaming uh, today. We're also going to go over the benefits, the pros and cons, benefits over standard cable, tel cable or satellite television. Uh, then we're going to have some questions, and then at Erica's suggestion, we can all scream. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> we're going to start off real simple with what is streaming. Uh, streaming is any media content, live or recorded, delivered to computers, mobile device, or mobile devices, should also say smart TVs, via the internet and played back in real time. All right, streaming is podcasts, webcasts, movies, TV shows, music videos, uh, they're all common. Uh, you also have books, comics, uh, a lot of other things that we're going to cover in today's presentation. All right. Now, what do you need to stream? <clears throat> First and foremost, an internet connection. Um, this can be either through a home internet provider, Spectrum, HughesNet, Frontier, uh, whatever, Verizon, Fios, whatever they have wherever you are, AT&T, Uverse. Uh, you also need a device that can connect to the internet. Um, these are computers and laptops, smart TVs, which are pretty much been all the rage for Christmas for the last two years or so. Uh, tablets like iPads, Androids, uh, Kindle Fires, that kind of thing. Um, smart TV again. Uh, you can also use Roku, Sling Boxes, Fire Sticks, things like that. Um, or a gaming console. Uh, Xboxes and PlayStations also allow you to stream. Uh, so do Nintendo Wii's and Switches, but that's much more limited. Uh, you also, nine times out of ten, you need an account with the streaming service that you're going to be using, and possibly a credit card. All right, so a lot of streaming services do require that you create an account. Now. Creating an account doesn't necessarily mean you have to pay for it. Um, for example, you have Pandora, uh, which is arguably the most popular music streaming service out there. You still need to create an account, even though it's free. Um, you know, and the account is generally, it's your username and a password. All right. Um, the reason that they do this is so they can keep track of the content you consume and recommend content based on what you've already listened to or watched. Like, for example, if I pull up Pandora, well, I could, but we don't have internet. So just visualize this with me. <laughs> uh, if I pull up Pandora, I listen to a lot of classic rock um, and jam band type of stuff. So it will go, you may also like, and sometimes it'll suggest something that I've never even heard of. I found a lot of good bands that way. Um, that kind of stuff, and that's why it's beneficial to have an account. Um, again, all you need to create an account in most cases is a valid email address and create a password. Um, make sure you have access to your email address before you do this. That's important. We run into that a lot here. Um, now, there are a few services that are going to let you watch without an account uh, as a guest, but these are generally the exception and not the rule. Okay, this is a long one. <laughs> Types of content. Um, basically, your streaming content is either going to be uh, video or music. Um, for video, you've got YouTube, that's the most popular in the world, Disney+, Plus, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, and so on and so on and so on. Um, requires a high-speed internet connection. Uh, Spectrum, Fios, AT&T, Uverse, or if you're going to do it over your cellular connection, I recommend you have unlimited data and you need at least a 4G LTE connection. Uh, that's because video is actually a lot of data. Uh, just one 45-minute episode of a show is about a gigabyte. And that's got to come over your internet connection fast enough for you to watch it as it comes in. Because again, streaming is watching basically in real time. Uh, yes. Go over that again. What do you mean by um, the data and because I get no notices that my data is almost finished. Yeah. 
Um, From AT&T, I guess. Yeah, I have AT&T as well. Okay. Um, With AT&T or any cellular provider, pretty much, you can go for, it's all unlimited talk and text, all right? So they don't care how much you call or text people within the United States. But the data, which is anything basically that's not calling and texting, can, in your case, and in mine too, be limited. Now, if you are, if you do have a limited data plan, you're okay with, you know, a cup, depending on what you have. You know, if you have six or eight gigs, you're all right with watching a couple YouTube videos. I wouldn't stream an HD movie on Netflix. Um, if you have unlimited data, go nuts. You're paying for it. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I updated data to eight something or whatever. You probably have exactly what I have. I have eight gigs a month. Eight dollars. Uh, it was up to dollars. So that's what you have? I have eight gigs a month, unlimited talk text. Yes. Okay. Um, right. Then we're good. But I don't, I don't watch Netflix on my phone. Like, I might watch a YouTube video if I need to know how to do something and I'm not on Wi-Fi. Uh, but I won't watch Netflix on my phone. <laughs> um, now, most of these video streaming services, in fact, almost all of them, require a monthly service charge. Uh, this can vary. You know, it can go from anywhere from about 5 bucks up past 20 it all depends on what you want, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we will cover that a little bit more later. Um, and just know that anything you watch for free will have commercials. Now, if you're used to regular cable, it's a lot less commercials. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, it, there will be ads because they're showing you video content for free. They have to make their money somewhere. These are businesses, not charities. Uh, now, music which I do listen to on my data plan quite frequently. Um, you have Spotify, Pandora, those are the two most popular. You also have iHeartRadio, which is really cool, and you have podcasts. We'll go into iHeartRadio and podcasts a little bit later. Uh, it does not require a high-speed internet connection. So even if you have your cell service is sketchy where you live, or you have, I hate to say it, but Frontier for home internet, you'll be good with streaming music because it's a lot less data. It's just a lot less that has to come in. Most of your music uh, streaming services are free playing. with ads. Um, <laughs> it's live. <laughs> it's live again. <laughs> um, anything that you listen to for free, again, it's going to have commercials. But if you're used to regular you know, AM or FM radio, there's commercials on that too. If you're used to satellite radio, well, you're paying for that, so that's why it doesn't have ads. All right, now we're gonna go into free versus paid. Uh, you're free. Most of these are video ex exclusively. Free, you have YouTube. Again, the most popular streaming service on the planet. Uh, there's a few, now we have a few you might not have heard of. There's Tubi. Uh, which is actually really good if you're into like 80s, like the 60s to 80s movies. They have a lot of them. Like especially the real B movies. You know, the schlocky horror movies. Oh. Yeah, it's great for them. They have a ton of it. Uh, you also have Peacock. That's NBC's streaming service. You have Pluto. That's another one that's good for old movies. Uh, Hoopla. Uh, there's a lot... There's so many more. You have Discovery Plus, again, Disney Plus. You have almost every network out there now has its own streaming service. Paramount Plus, if you're a fan of Yellowstone. And if you're not, you should be. Um, <laughs> again, with again with the freebies, there's going to be commercials. Um, and you might not have access to all their content. This is a big one with Peacock. When Peacock first came out, it was a lot of ads said free 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 I was like okay well I'm gonna see ads but I'll watch it so I found a series I wanted to watch turns out you only get the first two episodes uh, and I was like oh you want more it's $7.99 a month <laughs> yep <laughs> um, so you know before you get emotionally invested into a series make sure that all of it's available because I was really mad about that um, and a lot of these free services, like I listed, uh, 
you can unlock content or get rid of the commercials by paying for it. Um, the paid ones, Netflix, we all know what that is. Uh, you also have Hulu, Amazon Prime, HBO Max, Disney Plus, Discovery On Demand, Apple TV Plus. Uh, all of these are no commercials. If you discount the, a lot of them have commercials for their own programming right before it starts, but there's an option to just skip that. Yeah. And sometimes you find something you like. Um, and you will have access to the entire library if you pay for it. The only exception I know for this is HBO Max. If you don't have their top tier plan, you can't get the Hollywood movies the same day they release in theaters. Once it's out of theaters, you'll get it, but if you want to watch it at home the same day it comes out in theaters, you got to have the top tier package. Um, and be aware of the free trial. Um, we'll talk about the free trial in a little bit. Some of you have experienced this, some of you haven't, but we'll talk about it. Um, all right, yeah, we already covered a lot of this. Many of these free services will have paid or premium options. Um, blah, covers no more commercials, access to more content. Like I said before, just make sure before you start watching something, all the episodes are available because there's nothing worse than getting into a show and then finding out you have to pay for it. Um, back to the free trial. Uh, a lot of these things do a seven day, 14 day, 30 day free trial. All right, now this means you create an account, you enter a credit card, and after that free trial expires, you will be billed. It's most services you'll be billed on a monthly basis. Some of them, like HBO Max, bill you quarterly, but you will be billed. And you are consenting to that when you accept the terms of that free trial. So if you want to try a service and you want to try their free trial, Set a reminder in your phone, write it on your calendar at home, write it on the inside of your hand. When to cancel it, because if you don't, you're paying for a month. And it's probably going to be another month before you realize you paid for that first month and you're not going to get refunded. Um, and if anything asks for a credit card, you're automatically going to be billed at a certain point in time. So if you're really just looking for free content, do not enter your credit card number. All right, now we're gonna talk about YouTube. Like I said before, it is the most popular streaming platform on the planet. Uh, there's roughly 122 million users watching one billion hours of content a day. Think about that, a billion hours. That's, none of us in this room are gonna be alive in a billion hours. <laughs> I don't think this building will be standing in a billion hours. <laughs> um, 500 hours of content is uploaded every single minute. That works out to about 720 million hours of content uploaded per day. Um, one third of the world's population watches YouTube at least once a month. Think about that. We're up to what, 3.8 billion people on this planet? Something like that? So roughly a billion people a day. Are tuning into YouTube wow. yeah uh, once a month but then there's a lot of people I mean if you talk to anybody I mean under 35 or so or under 25 their pri the primary their primary video content provider is YouTube you know uh, my girlfriend has they're not little anymore but little nephews that that's all they watch I mean, you know, from, and one of them, like, from when he was three years old, he couldn't even speak yet, but he knew how to watch YouTube videos, and I've seen it. You've probably seen it with your grandchildren or great-grandchildren. You know, they're starting young, um, and the reason is that there's a video for everything on YouTube. Um, I mean, how-to videos on every topic. I've, I've repaired cars with YouTube videos. Like recently I had to do a starter motor on a Chevy Silverado pickup truck. I didn't know where the darn thing was. I mean, I've done that on small cars where it's by the engine. Well, this wasn't. I just pulled up a YouTube video and I watched it. And all right, right there. 
Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Um, but I mean, that's everything. It's not just cars. If you want to know how to fix a broken screen on an iPhone, if you want to know why your computer is beeping at you constantly, um, you know, <laughs> or, or randomly reading international news. <laughs> Uh, there is a you there are multiple YouTube videos about it um, You know, I had to change the oil on a riding mower. I'd never done that before So I just typed in the model number oil change it was 200 videos on how to do it Just some guy with an iPhone in his garage shooting a video on how to change oil <laughs> Yeah um, There are also movies on YouTube uh, You know it rotates monthly I, remember, I know this month, like, uh, City Slickers is on it. Again, you'll watch it with ads, but it's free. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are documentaries, so many documentaries. I mean, everything. From your standard nature, Discovery Channel type of documentaries. You, you can, quantum physics. Uh, there's even university lectures on YouTube. I'm fairly convinced if you wanted to, you could learn how to perform open heart surgery on YouTube. Not that I recommend anybody try this, but it there I guarantee you there's videos on it. Uh, however, all of that, the most popular videos are cat videos, which is also the second biggest cause of internet traffic, cat videos. People like cat videos. <laughs> all right. <laughs> now, who here knew that we have a YouTube channel? I am disappointed in the rest of you. <laughs> yeah, you are going to be on it. Um, it's we started it during COVID. Um, I wanted to start it during COVID, and you know, Doris said go for it, and allowed me to get my you know tripod mount and all that. Um, and it's a way so we can share these presentations, uh, and you can go back and watch them. You know, if you like what you saw here today. Go back and see what else we have. Um, and it's another way to engage with the library. You know, I go over the YouTube channel's analytics, statistics, uh, every single month, at the end of every month. I got to do that, like tomorrow. And uh, one of the things I can click on is, where are people watching from? Now about 70% of our audience is with from, within about a 50 mile radius of here. We have people from India, New Zealand, Australia, uh, where else? One from the Philippines last month. They're watching what we're doing right here. And that's kind of cool. Um, you know, if you do check out our channel, do me a favor, subscribe. All right, it helps us out. It helps get more of our content out there. Um, there will be no ads because we don't have a monetized channel. We do not get paid uh, for our YouTube channel. And all you have to do is search the Pine Bush Library on YouTube, and it'll pop right up. If you look right here, that's what you see when you search Pine Bush Library on the YouTube channel. You could also link it through our Facebook, link through our website. That's about it, yeah. All right. Um, now, music. Uh, this is probably my favorite thing about streaming, is the music. Um... All of us grew up listening to the radio. You know, you grew up listening to whatever songs that radio station wanted you to hear. Um, unfortunately, as time has evolved, a lot of radio stations, especially around here, have been getting bought up by huge media corporations. And the playlists have suffered because certain record companies pay to get their music played more. Um, you know, I'm big, I was a big PDH listener. There's songs that I haven't heard on there in 15 years, ever since uh, Town Square Media bought them up. It's because those record companies don't pay to have their artists played, and others do. Well, streaming's a fix. It's like Netflix, but for music, and mostly free. Um, again, most, ser most of the services are free. You will hear ads. Like, not as much as you do on the radio. Uh, and Or you can op get the premium option, which is without ads. Um, all, of the pay, all of the paid and premium services and some of the free ones offer offline listening. Uh, this is cool 
because you can just download it to your phone, computer, whatever, and you can listen to it while you're taking a walk. You can listen to it in your car. You don't have to use your cellular data if you're on a limited data plan. Um, and it works if you, you know, if you sometimes, let's say, go on vacation out of the country or go somewhere where there is no cellular service, then it's good to just have it on your phone and it's legal, you know, and free. Uh, most, the most popular music streaming services are Spotify, Pandora, and Apple Music Plus. Uh, these are all apps you can download to your phone. Uh, I'd show you what Pandora and Spotify look like, but internet. Um, now, if you still do love radio, or there's a radio station from where you grew up that you just can't live without, and now that you live around here, you can't hear it anymore, download iHeartRadio. You can listen to radio stations from anywhere. Thousands, tens of thousands of radio stations are all broadcasting on iHeartRadio. Uh, it has the same, it is the live radio broadcast. It's the same as you would hear if you lived in that area. Um, you know, Radio Woodstock is, in fact, I don't think I've ever taken my iHeartRadio off Radio Woodstock. You know, they're still independent, they're cool, and uh, it's cool that I can listen to them because you can't pick them up in the car around here, or at least not well or consistently. But you can listen to anything, and it's all free. Um, again, you got to download the app for all of these, and most of them, I think all of them, require an account, which is just, again, an email and a password. No credit card numbers required. Uh, and I'm just going to keep saying this over and over. Beware of the free trial. Uh, Pandora, Spotify, Apple Music, they all give you a free trial period. And then after that, they're going to bill you. So don't give your credit card. Right. Don't give your credit card. If it asks for a credit card, it's going to cost money. That's yeah. why they want it. <laughs> um, you know, and every once in a while, I know Pandora and Spotify both remind you that, hey, you can get premium with no ads for free for 30 days. It's all right. I'll listen to an ad every 30 minutes. It's cool. You know, I know Spotify does an ad every 30 minutes. It's an ad when you start up and then 30 minutes before another ad. I'll deal. It's okay. Um, now, who here has heard of or listens to podcasts? Wait, the podcast? Podcasts. I know, I think. Okay, cool. Um, a podcast, for what those of you who don't know, it's a uh, series of spoken word audio episodes. It's all focused on a particular topic or theme, like cycling or startups or coffee making. Uh, <laughs> you can subscribe to the show with the app on your phone, tablet, or computer, and listen to episodes whenever you like. Uh, if you have an iPhone, iPad, Apple computer, the podcast app is already on there. You don't have to do anything. Just click on it. Uh, if you have an Android, you do have to download the Google Audio, Google Audio, Google Podcast app, something like that. It's a freebie. Um... Just like YouTube videos, podcasts cover every topic you can possibly imagine. Um, I mean, m the podcasts I listen to are, I mean, I'm into true crime and uh, just call it the Joe Rogan experience, uh, the most popular podcast in the world. Do they have a menu for that? They certainly do. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, and, you know, I could walk all of you iPhone users. Yeah, how do you find the menu? You Wait. Know, how do we get that on our... You have an iPhone. You just click on podcasts. Where was the menu? Because I was it's, just a whole, uh, whole, whole, whole copy. Uh, she was doing a series on... I forgot already. And she had four or five podcasts. I just clicked on it because I happened to see it. And she said something on the TV, but... Uh, evidently it just came right up and I wondered what the others that you spoke about well you would just go you'd click on the podcast app on, and it's on your iPhone it's somewhere on there okay. and then there's a search option it's somewhere on there yeah well I don't know where you store your apps <laughs> well, I don't have any that's I mean, why it's a little bit of a you need a place your apps. apps too oh, I have we have one yeah, yeah I know I do but I don't know how to do yeah, that I have yeah, your apps okay. that's it 
you go to your Apple store. No, it's already on your phone. Apps, uh, yeah, Apple store, store right? right? No, it's, no. it's, it's already in there. podcast. It's already oh. there. Yeah, it's, and I'd I, show you on my phone, but it's currently recording. <laughs> <laughs> it says podcast. Yeah, it does. Let me look. And, and like, I have some apps, but I don't know how to use them. So do I. I have some apps I don't know how to use. I want to know how. Okay. <laughs> Next class. Mm -hmm. Oh, Yeah, you just scroll through. And then you go to the search function and you type in whatever. I mean, there's, uh, this is a new and emerging one. There's uh, people that are telling like epic stories in podcast form. You know, podcasts usually run half an hour up. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle of listening to one it's like two hours and 15 minutes long but what's cool is you can listen to it you know a couple minutes at a time uh you know while i was making breakfast this morning i hit play i got like half an hour of it and these podcasts can be downloaded to your phone again for offline listening uh or you could just stream them live and it will save your spot so if you stop listening 15 minutes in and you pick it up a month later you're still 15 minutes in some podcasts have ads, some don't. It's up to the podcaster. Uh, there are people that podcast that they have a large enough audience that companies come to them and say, hey, promote our product and we'll give you money. And they do, you know, uh, because these are businesses, not charities. Uh, but there really is podcasts for everything. You wanna hear a podcast about how to breed golden retrievers. I guarantee you it's there. Uh, it's probably the oldest form of streaming media. Podcasting existed, I forgot the exact year, but back in the early, early 2000s. Um, so it's been around a lot longer than Netflix or Hulu or before most people had high-speed internet connections <laughs> because it's just audio. Uh, and it's they're interesting. Uh, you can also get podcasts on Spotify that's an option as well the only downside with spotify is you need to have the premium version to listen offline so but 90 percent of your podcasts can be found in the podcast store in the podcast app or google audio or podcasting app if anybody has an android phone i'll show you where that is if you're interested when we're done uh yeah all right all right now who here has cable television or satellite okay um, is that your least favorite bill every month yes. yeah yeah right <laughs> and they all have commercials you're paying over a hundred dollars a month I assume to watch crap mm -hmm. that has commercials mm -hmm. so you're paying to be advertised to um, and I mean, I've seen, I've seen people who are paying over two hundred a month just for TV. Forget the internet, forget the phone. Two hundred dollars a month just for television. You know, uh, I've heard it can go as low as forty. Not around here. Um, just, I mean, the average cable cost for cable TV in the state of New York is eighty-seven dollars a month, and that is before the taxes, the fees, the surcharge, the box rental, the remote rental. The, I gave you silver connectors instead of the copper colored one surcharge and everything else. Um, you know, cable companies operate this way because they, they were the only game in town. You know, it was cable or satellite, that was it. You know, if you lived outside of a metro area, that was your, those were your options. Um, you know, a, you could put a giant antenna on the roof of your house and you know, hopefully you'd get the two, four, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, and whatever the God channel was. Uh, but most people wouldn't want to do that, so they just got cable, and then over time they just, you know, nickel and dime you, and then the next thing you know, you have a hundred and seventy dollar a month bill for television, most of which you don't want to watch. Uh, streaming services, I mean, they could run 
anywhere. I have seven ninety nine here. I know there's one you can get four ninety nine. Uh, to about twenty dollars a month. I think Apple TV right now is the most expensive. Apple TV Plus, and that's nineteen ninety nine a month. Now all those prices are plus tax, and that's sales tax only, based on where you live. But you need a smart TV. No, you don't. No. You have an iPhone. Oh. You have a computer. Oh. So you don't need a smart TV. Okay. Um, now I'm not advocating for one over the other. You know, you have to figure out what one's right for you. Uh, but many people my age and younger, uh, we're cutting. It's called cutting the cable. We're done with TV. You know, um, I know for streaming services, probably paying a third of what the cable bill was. And there is literally always something to watch. Like, I even have a list on my phones of shows that I have to watch. Like, I have a backlog of things to watch. Whereas with cable, before streaming and everything, it was, oh, I gotta wait for Thursday for Sons of Anarchy to be on. You know, On Demand made that a little bit better because you didn't have to be there right then and there. But it was still, you got like one a week. You know? I just started watching House of Dragons. I watched four episodes in a day. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yes, everybody likes to binge watch. Where you look outside, it's dark. You're like, oh God, I did nothing today. <laughs> uh, the one thing that a lot of people miss and one thing that keeps a lot of people from getting rid of cable is sports. You know, if you follow a specific team, like if you're a big Yankees fan, there is a package that allows you to stream the Yankee games or essentially the Yes Network. You're going to get blacked out on some games, but that's because they're playing probably another team that's close enough, like New York or Philly. Mm -hmm. um, but you could still watch it. If you're a huge football fan, uh, there's the NFL Sunday Ticket. I don't know if they still call it that, but it's basically every NFL game, mm -hmm. and you could just go through and pick which ones you want to watch. Um, they have it for soccer. They have it for racing. They have it. They've all got it. Uh, and the cost varies. You know, uh, I used to sell NFL Sunday ticket when AT&T took over DirecTV. Yeah, that was it. Um, and we used to sell NFL Sunday ticket. It was like $280 a year. I mean, that's a lot of money, depending on how big of a football fan you are. You know, you also have MLB on deck if you're a huge baseball fan. Um, but, you know, you figure out the costs and you make your own decision. Uh, thanks a lot for coming. Um, thank you. Yeah, yes, thank you're welcome. You very much.